Chris Martin. Hey, here at the NAMM show. Yeah, here at the NAMM show. Yeah. Um, so it's an honor. Thank you Thanks. so much for giving me My a My pleasure. Minutes. Yeah. This brand is so special to so many people. It's it's on the logo how long it's, it's been. For around. generations. It's, it's 190 years. 190 yeah. years. That's a brand that doesn't require a lot of changes. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you got it right. You got it right 190 years ago. What do you find to be the most challenging part of pushing forward but also respecting the past? As I talked earlier about the traditional rare exotic hardwoods that we've been so fortunate to be able to use on the D18 and the D28 and D35 and the D45. You go back to the D35, that was, I think, the beginning of the company acknowledging that we need to take as good a care of these woods as we can with the three-piece back. And so I have felt it was my job to say it's okay to look for alternatives. They need to be acceptable, they need to be structurally sound, they need to create a sound. But I think if we were to just focus on rosewood and mahogany, that ultimately would not be the future. I ran into someone at a show a couple of years ago, came up to me and said, Mr. Martin, I'm, I want to tell you what I think about your company. I'm like, <laughs> I think you're about to. Uh, and I said, okay, take a shot at it. He goes, I think Martin Guitar has one foot planted firmly in the past. And I said, of course we do. And then he said, you know what? I think Martin Guitar has one foot planted firmly in the future. And I'm like, I'm gonna use that line again. It's accurate, I think it's accurate. Right? I, I, right? uh, I just read your article in Premier Guitar about the striped ebony. Yeah, I, I wish all ebony was jet black. It isn't, it's still ebony. I know it's hard for people to wrap their head around. And, and the one challenge that you would think, well, why don't you stain it? And there's a term, it's called ebonizing. So you would take a white wood and stain it black to make it look like ebony. But actually trying to stain striped ebony is incredibly difficult. And so we've just said, until we find a way to do it that it's durable, we're just going to open the kimono and say, it's still ebony, it's got some white stripes on it. I would argue it actually it makes for a unique experience looking for an instrument. Too. It's a little you, different, right? You pick something that yep. no one else is going to have yeah. in, a, in a model that might have you know, thousands of units yep. out yep. there. Chris, <laughs> thank you so much for the time. Cheers. I really, really appreciate it.